Hello and welcome back. Today we will see how to use the multivariate EMD in MATLAB. Therefore, you first have to download the MEMD function published by Rehmann and Mandik. I put the respective link in the description box. And of course, we also need data. And for simplicity, we will generate our own synthetic data based on sine waves. Fs is the sampling frequency that we set to 500 Hz. And dt is basically the step width that results from the predefined frequency. Then we set the stopping time to 5, which defines the total length of our data. And from all these predefined quantities, we can then build our time vector t. And I also include another stopping time, which is only used for plotting the data. It just defines the extract of the data that we are looking at for clarity. Next, we define the properties of the sine waves, which is frequency and amplitude. We will combine three different waves, so we specify three frequency values and three amplitudes. Then we combine them to three different signals, so we deal with three varied data. The first signal or channel has an offset from zero, defined by amplitude A1, and then a sum of two sine waves. The second signal has no offset and is a sum of one sine wave that we also used for the first signal, but now with a different amplitude A2, and an additional sine wave with a frequency F3. The third channel has an offset defined by A3 and is a combination of all three sine waves, all scaled by the amplitude A3. We combine all th signals to a single matrix in which the columns uh, denote the different channels. Now we also need to specify some parameters for the algorithm, um, namely the number of projection directions and the threshold values for the stopping criterion. You can play around with these values to see which influence they have on the resulting modes. And if you are not sure about their meaning, please watch my video about the MEMD algorithm. Then I also define some colors, because I don't like the default MATLAB colors, but this is of course optional. So let's first plot our synthetic data to see what we are actually working with. I use the tight layout option um, to plot all three signals in a single plot. And you can see that I also use the second stopping time um, to define which extract of the data we want to inspect. And in the third plot, I use some fake data that is plotted outside our domain to represent the colors um, of the first and the second signal, such that I can include them in the legend of this third subfigure. Surely there are more elegant ways to implement this, but this was just the fastest I could think of. And um, this is what the data looks like. All channels look quite different, but we know from construction that they share specific frequencies and we will use the MEMD to detect which frequencies are common across the different signals, because in reality we usually do not know this beforehand. Just from using synthetic data, we are now aware of this shared um, frequency content and we can use this knowledge to validate the accuracy of the decomposition. Okay. Now we can apply the MEMD to our data. Please note that in the MEMD function, all possible ways how to call the function and which outputs can be obtained are explained in detail. Um, so please check out this description if you are not sure how to proceed. At first, our tree variate data that we call data combined is passed to the function. Then the number of projection directions k and then we specify which stopping criterion we use. For now, we use the standard stopping criterion, which I also explained in the video about the MEMD algorithm. It requires three different threshold values that we specified above and stored in the vector called stopgrid. The MEMD function returns a matrix containing all IMFs, including the residual, and we call this um, vector IMFs. Next, we plot the IMFs of our synthetic data. For a nice looking figure, I predefine the boundaries of the y-axis, but of course this is optional. And then I used the tight layout again. Um, 
And I also use a for loop uh, through all variates and all modes. Here the um, parameter i uh, walks through the variates and depending on the index, we predefine the color and the label that is later assigned to the y-axis. The order of the variates in the IMF matrix is of course equal to the order we specified in our original data matrix. And um, then for each variate, we have this additional for loop with a j that walks through all IMFs of a single variate. And depending on the index, we specify if we plot a title or a y label. Please note that I restrict this for loop um, to j equals 3. This is because I know that all IMF numbers greater than 3 can be combined to our residual, since they are falsely split into separate modes. So we take the sum over all remaining IMFs and plot the resulting signal that I call dd. Um, so let's run the script to see the resulting figure. It is clearly visible that all variates share the first IMF, which contains our high frequency sign with F1. And you can also see that the amplitude of the oscillation is irrelevant to the algorithm. All variates possess a different amplitude that is multiplied with the sine function, but since the MEMD only focuses on the frequency content, it does not get distracted by the varying amplitudes. The oscillation with the smaller frequency f2 is contained in the second IMF. Since our second variate g2 does not possess this frequency, its second IMF is close to zero. You will probably never have a mode that is exactly zero, since we are still doing some sort of approximation to the data. But if it looks like this, you can be pretty sure that the dominant frequency is not contained in this specific variate. The third frequency, F3, is only contained in the second and third variate, and we see that this is also correctly identified by the MEMT, as the third mode of the first variate is close to zero. The remaining residual contains the large scale trend of the data. Since we included an offset from zero, to the first and the third variate, their residual displaced this value. Certainly, we have some irregularities near the boundaries that are a common byproduct um, from the spline fitting, which is less accurate close to the edges. But if your signal is long enough and you're not specifically interested exactly in this data close to the signal boundaries, this is not a big deal. And otherwise, there are some approaches to improve this behavior. For example, mirroring the data and using a small portion for interpolation near the edges instead of extrapolation. In summary, the MEMD has successfully decomposed our data as we intended. The algorithm has precisely separated all individual sign functions from each other and was also able to reveal the shared frequency components which we could validate um, since we use synthetic data. Please keep in mind that our data is very, very easy to decompose, since it only contains continuous sine waves without unsteadiness or nonlinearity, and the different frequency values are widely separated. But if you are using more complex data, the decomposition might not be as distinct and obvious as in the present example. If you are using more complex data, you should definitely try a different number of projection directions and varying the stopping uh, threshold values to study the influence of these parameters on the decomposition. For the simple data of the present case, those parameters have a very small influence. And I have also attached some code that performs the univariate EMD individually um, on each variate, just to show you how the results deviate um, from using the multivariate EMD and directly decomposing all signals jointly. Here we use the standard EMD function provided in the MATLAB toolkit. And the plotting procedure is very similar to visualizing the IMFs obtained by the MEMD. So let's see how this looks like. We see that the individual decomposition for each variate works quite fine. Depending on the number of sine waves we added together, uh, we get two or three modes and then the residual. 
However, if we want to compare across um, the variates, we have kind of a problem because the frequency content inside the modes is not aligned anymore. For the first IMF, it works out because the highest frequencies contained in all variates and thus displayed in the first IMF. But the second IMF contains very different scale sizes when comparing the first and third variate to the second variate. And we can only speculate if the second IMF of the second variate actually contains the same oscillation as the third IMF of the third variate. So this is the issue that I've also addressed in my theoretical videos and I hope that it is now a little bit clearer once you have seen this problem with actual data. As I've already mentioned, we have used quite simple synthetic data for this example. In the next video, it will get a little bit more complex with data containing sudden changes in time and we will apply the noise assisted MEMD for decomposition. So stay tuned and I hope to see you soon. Bye!